We can have events with codes executed on the server, and events whose code is executed in the client, that is, on the device. We will now consider the type of actions that may be written within a user event. Let's imagine that this is the code of the event in client. Then we also have the web server and the database. So what can we do at this point? Call the server's REST services as data providers or procedures to search in the database and return the information we will then load on a variable. They must necessarily be shown as REST services. We cannot call an internal procedure from the device. For example, it corresponds to having been written in the event. In an event, we may also want to enter a new record in the database without having to request the user for information. This may be done as in any other Genexus object, with the business components methods and properties, except for the fact that here, since we are invoking from the device, it'll also have to be shown as a REST service. This is the case of batch updates. In sum, we may invoke REST services, data providers, procedures, and business components. As we've seen, we may also call the work with detail screen for inserting, updating, or deleting. Through the screen invoked, the data is requested from the user to then perform the corresponding action, which, internally, will mean an invocation to the REST business component. We are thus invoking the detail of a work with to be used internally by the REST business component whose data is requested from the user through the edit screen. We could also want to simply call the list or the detail in view mode. Or even objects called panels for smart devices, which are screens with somewhat more freedom than the work widths we have seen. Or we could resort to some of the functionalities provided by the APIs such as displaying a message on screen, requesting the user's confirmation to continue, returning to the caller, refreshing the screen, and adding a contact to the address book, among other possibilities. Note that from the examples mentioned, except for the refresh, all the actions may be solved without having to go execute anything on the server. It is also possible to invoke a web panel, that is, a panel of the web application, which displays and allows the entry of data for that type of applications, just like the panel for smart devices in the case of smart device applications. For instance, here we invoke the web panel called AskDate. It'll be open in the device's browser with a hidden frame so that it appears more like the rest of the application. In which other way could we execute a web object other than through a web browser? So far we've seen all possible invocations to REST services, data providers, procedures, and business components, to detail screens of the work with in edit mode, for inserting, updating, or deleting interactively, to the work with screens to view information, both list and detail in view mode, to panels for smart devices, which we'll be seeing in a separate video, to any of the APIs for smart devices provided by Genexus, and through its methods and to web panels. This is only the case with server object, not invoked as a REST service. The reason for this is simple, actually. In this case, a browser is executed in a transparent manner. But apart from the invoking commands we've just seen, there are also other ones that allow for the possibility for making a screen control either visible or not, the possibility of changing the class of a screen control, the possibility, in all lines of a grid, to go only through those selected by the user prior to executing the event. The possibility of assigning values to variables of simple data types. And to variables of compound data types, structured or business components. Lastly, we have the composite command. What do we need it for? In Genexus web applications, within an event that is being executed, when an object called returns an error, the execution is not interrupted. It continues in the following sentence. The developer then must handle errors and program the actions necessary 
within the events code. If we want the execution to stop upon an error in a sequence of calls, in order for errors to be handled automatically by displaying them on screen without the need to write any programming, then we will need a special command to specify this. This is possible with the composite command. This is implemented only in smart devices, where it's mandatory every time that more than one invocation is made within the same event. In this example, we can see a series of commands, some of which are invocations. When the first invocation fails, due to a duplicated key for example, then the error message is displayed as we see here, and the execution stops. The following invocation is not executed, nor is the procedure or anything following ahead. When this is not the case, then the invocation will indeed take place. If, in the procedure, we specify as the output parameter a variable of the message data type, the predefined STT, which, as we saw, is what a business component automatically returns when we execute its getMessages method, and load it in the procedure with the convenient error messages or warnings, this variable will be automatically inspected upon the return of the procedure's execution. In the case of an error, the execution stops and the messages are displayed on screen. Otherwise, the following invocation is executed, and so on. We have just gone through the events whose code is executed on the device. Now it's the turn of the events executed on the server. They are the system's events. Start, Refresh, and Load. To introduce them, let's take the following example. On the list of real estate properties, we want to show a checkbox, checked for the most visited properties, and an image indicating that the property was recently entered into the system. For this purpose, we've added a boolean variable on the list of the properties work with. And on the layout, we have inserted it. Along with an image control that we have named image1 in order to reference it later on. We've created a procedure that receives the property's identifier as parameter and returns a boolean value. That is the result of assessing whether the number of visits scheduled for that property is greater than 2. Here we would indicate the value that we determined would make the difference between most visited and otherwise. In order to make the testing easier, we set a low value for this. So with over two visits, the true value will be loaded on the variable, and otherwise, the value will be false. Having done this, what remains is to program so that when a query is made to the table of real estate properties to recover each line that will be loaded on the grid, the value of the variable is also loaded with the result of the procedure. In addition to marking whether the image indicating that the property is new must be shown or not. But where do we place this code? The answer is in the load event of the system, the one that queries the database recovering the records to be loaded as grid lines. Here we can see all the events defined so far for the list. They include the three events of the system that have been mentioned. We choose load and write. We press F5.
and we see that Dream is indicated as having over two visits on schedule. If we check this, we see that it has three. Also, the date of entry in the system is March 28th, 2012. If we know that today is the 29th, and that it's considered new when it was entered in the past two days, then the image will come up. Green Tree was entered last year, on September 12th, and it appears as having one visit. So it was not frequently visited, nor is it new. Magnolia is from June 26th of last year, and it has no visit scheduled. And lastly, Utopia is indicated as the most visited. Therefore, we will have to find over two visits, and its date of entry in the system must be prior to March 27th, 2012. which, as we can see, is indeed the case. In conclusion, when we have a grid with attributes on a screen, what we're implicitly saying is that the table of the database corresponding to those attributes, and occasionally its extended table, must be accessed. And of all records fulfilling the conditions, return to the device a collection with the values requested. A data provider REST, implicitly created and generated by Genexus in a way that's transparent to us, is in charge of recovering the data and sending it to the device. This data provider executes the code of the load event for each record in the table recovered to be included in the collection returned. This is how it loads, for each real estate property, the values true or false of both the most visited variable as well as of the visible property of the image control. Therefore, this code is executed on the server, so we can use the commands we usually apply in the case of web applications. For example, let's note that here we are invoking a procedure, is most visited, which is internal. The start will also be executed on the server, but only when the screen is executed for the first time. That is to say, the first time that this work with screen is opened. Instead, the refresh will be executed every time that the screen has to be refreshed. The load, the grid's load, will be executed immediately following the refresh. This about covers all the aspects we wanted to review regarding events in the various screens of a work with for smart devices. Everything we saw also applies to the events of panels for smart devices. Would you like to implement panels to allow for data requests from the user, to show data not necessarily originating in one or several tables of the database, and to make your screens more flexible? To be continued.